God bless you as you're giving. Real quickly, let me just mention, turn in your Bibles to Job 41. As you're turning to Job 41, to our visitors, I want to say there's a little card in the pew right in front of you that says, Get Connected. So if you're visiting with us and you uh, haven't already filled that out, please pull that out. It says, Get Connected. Hang on to it as you leave out. We want to give you a little gift. Myself, one of the pastors, or whoever's worried, the connection boot to my right, your left. So, home folks, if you're sitting close to a visitor, help them out. Fill this card out. And then our home folks, we're going to sign the rest of your books located to the middle aisle of your seat. Put your name on there. If you're not getting our weekly email devotional, but would like to do so, put your email address on there. Job 41. Are you there yet? Five of you. So I'm waiting. Job 41. You know where that is, right? Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Job, Old Testament. Job 41, we begin a series called Leviathan last Sunday. Prior to last Sunday, how many of you have ever heard a message preached on this particular subject? Subject, lift your hand before last Sunday. Two of you. How many knows that if God's Word devotes a whole chapter to something, it must be important? Look at your neighbor and tell them this is important. So an entire chapter, Job 41, is devoted to this subject of Leviathan. Not only is Job 41 dedicated to it, devoted to it, there are other places in Scripture. We're going to read some of Job 41 before we're through this series. Hopefully, the Lord's help will cover the whole chapter. Job 41, beginning with verse 1, it says, Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as a bird? Or will you leash him for your maiden? Skip into verse 7. It says, can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him. Remember the battle and never do it again. I can't wait to get to verse 8. That's going to be some good stuff. Skipping down to verse 12. I will not conceal his limbs, his mighty power, or his graceful proportions. Who can remove his outer coat? Who can approach him with a double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around? Verses 15 through 17 are very important. Listen to them. His rows of scales are his pride. Shut up tightly with a seal. One is so near another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together. Everybody say stick together. They stick together and cannot be parted. Skipping down to the very last verse of the chapter, verse 34. It says, he beholds every high thing. He is king over all the children of pride. Anybody notice a common word there? Pride. One verse. You stay at uh, stay at Job forty one, unless you just are not sure that pastor really read out the Bible. Then bless your heart. Go ahead, Isaiah twenty seven one. But if you trust me, you can look at the screen. In that day, the Lord with his severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan. The fleeing serpent, Leviathan, that, that twisted serpent, and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea. The devil may be strong, but our God is stronger. Amen. Now, we showed you a picture for those of you that were here last week, but some of you were not. And we're going to show that picture to you again. This is the best that we could find that as Job describes Leviathan, this depicts a picture of what he might look like, literally, this was drawn in 1865. As you can see in the background is the picture of the Lord with his sword pulled out. The reason the Lord is in the background with his sword pulled out is that the only thing that will defeat Leviathan is the strong sword of the Lord. Now if you'll take that picture off for me. Leviathan is not a literal being it's not a literal physical being but it is a spiritual entity in other words he exists 
He looks as he's described in the scripture, Job 41 and other places, if you could see him in the spirit realm, but he is not a natural being, he is a spiritual being or entity. For those of you who think Pastor Ronnie is off in left field somewhere and no such creatures exist, then I beg to differ with you because throughout the scriptures and throughout the Bible, it tells us that spiritual beings and spiritual entities exist both on God's side and on the devil's side. And so Leviathan is described much like a sea dragon, as you saw in the picture. But he is called the, children, oh, the king over the children of pride. So if we were to put it in simple terms, what is Leviathan? Leviathan is the spirit of pride. And I believe that with all of my heart, one of the greatest things that is stopping, hindering, a move of God in these days that we live is Leviathan, the spirit of pride. And what God wants in these last days, because it's not just in the world, it's in the church. The spirit of pride, we find it everywhere we go in the world. When you turn on CNN, Fox News, or whatever news you listen to, you see it as politicians get on the news and they arrogantly talk about what they're going to do. And they arrogantly stand behind people and rules and laws that remove, attempt to remove. How can you remove? You can't remove God. Attempt to remove God from our nation and our schools. But it's also crept into the church. And so Leviathan, even though he has existed for centuries, I believe that in these last days, he has been unleashed by hell itself to destroy, to hinder, and to stop the move of God in these last days. But what God is asking for is for cooperation so that he can bring resuscitation. Oh, you got to get that because here's what God wants to do. He wants us to cooperate or he wants us to decide to join in with him and, and join in in cooperation so that he can bring resuscitation to us first, the church, and then to the world who has lost its breath. It's, it's lost its ability to breathe in the Spirit of God and live in the power and the anointing and the presence of God because what God is not looking for is people who mimic or mock Jesus but instead they mirror or reflect Jesus mm, that's good preaching some of you I lost you at the word mock because you would say I would never mock him but let me explain it like God gave it to me mock as in the sense of a mocking bird what does a mockingbird do? He repeats what he's heard. He may have no idea what he's talking about, but he heard somebody else say it, and so he says it. There is no power in mimicking or mocking, but there is great power in mirroring and reflecting Jesus. It's called the difference between religion and religious bondage and spirit and spiritual authority <laughs> and what God wants in these last days is for his church to cooperate so he can resuscitate what does that mean he wants to break off the scales from our life so that air can get in I told you verses 15 through 17 were very important I alluded to them just a little bit last week we're going to go deeper but it says that, Le says that Leviathan is covered with scales and his scales are so tightly put together that no air the word air there in the Hebrew is the word ruach it's, in other words it's not the word air that means the air we breathe as in oxygen but it's the word air as in the spirit of God and so the Bible says that the spirit of pride hides himself under lesser spirits so tightly that the air or the spirit of God cannot break through and bring air or life into the person but what God wants us to do is cooperate and not look at our wife or our husband or our neighbor and think oh I know that person he's prideful she's prideful because they walk around like this. 
But instead, God wants us to look in the mirror and allow Him to take inventory of our own life because there's not a one of us who has not dealt with the spirit of pride. And as we allow God to deal with us, He will peel back the scales. He will break open the scales. He will destroy the spirit of Leviathan in our lives. And He will breathe with Ruach, the spirit of God in us once again. And in these last days, we will not mimic or mock Christ. But instead, we will mirror Him. We will reflect Him. And we will act like Him, the fruit. And we will walk like, like Him, the gifts the power and we will we will talk like him we will look like Jesus and we will go forth and do what Jesus did in his day and our world once again will be visited with the power of God come on somebody now why wouldn't pride the spirit of pride be a strong last day spirit when it's the very thing that entered Lucifer's heart that caused him, who was an archangel, to become a devil. <laughs> the very thing, Lucifer, as we study the scriptures, we find out that he was a beautiful archangel. The Bible describes him as very beautiful. That probably most, if not all, of heaven's music flowed out and through Lucifer. And it entered into Lucifer's heart one day. I'm the one that's making all this music. And everyone's singing and worshiping God. I think I deserve that worship. I think I deserve that praise. I should. Somebody ought to pat me on the back. Come on somebody. <laughs> and so he said, I, I think I can do a better job than God. He had such influence in heaven that he influenced one third of the angels of heaven to follow him in an insurrection against God we know the story that just doesn't work out very good for you does it to try to unseat God <laughs> and so Lucifer finds himself to no longer be Lucifer but he is now kicked out of heaven and he becomes Satan Abaddon, Apollon, the devil so I have a question for you. If today all that you can get on, on your mind is your neighbor, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, um, your coworker, <laughs> your schoolmate, then let me have to ask you a question. If pride can make a devil out of an archangel, what can it do to you? Uh, I had about 15 angry people that bounced off of. You know why you're getting mad? Because you're bound by a Leviathan. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't preach straight to you. If pride can make a devil out of an archangel, what can it do to us? So today God is asking us to do some introspection and look at what is going on in our life and humble ourselves so that God can peel back the scales, break the spirit of Leviathan, and in humility, I'm telling you, we will begin to look like, act like, walk like, talk like Jesus. This church itself will be turned upside down, but it won't stop at Circe Faith, I'm telling you, and it makes some people angry. This will not only be a regional church, but it will be a worldwide church because there are people out of this body that the spirit in which God moves will so raise them up that they will be sent from this place to the highways and the byways and the four corners of this world and God will use the anointing that has been released in this house of God to touch literally the world. No limit on what God can do. Look at it. First question. 14 questions approximately in the book of Job, 41, that are asked to describe Job. In other words, God doesn't carry on a conversation with Job and say, Job, sit down here and let me just describe Leviathan to you. Instead, as God usually does, he doesn't give us the handwriting on the wall and just make it all a little simple so I can... You know what I mean? Anybody ever find God kind of hides himself and I have to seek to find? Nobody else? So God asks questions to reveal what Leviathan is all about. And we're going to cover, oh my Lord help me. We're going to cover some of those. 
Number one, can you draw a Leviathan with a hook, snare his tongue with a line, or put a reed in his nose, or pierce with a hook? So God asked this question. Someone was telling me they looked up in a modern day dictionary, Leviathan, and in that definition it had the word crocodile. Now I can tell you, and some of you know I mentioned, or we sent out a card to some who missed last week, and then we mentioned early service, if you're not currently attending Sunday school, that one of our classes in the children's sanctuary is teaching now on the same subject, just to give you more of this while I'm preaching on it. And so Philip Myers is teaching this, and we're talking, and he talked about how he found some of the same um, things in his study. But a crocodile doesn't fully describe um, the dimensions and the horribleness of this spiritual entity. He cannot be caught with a hook. You cannot, you cannot throw out a line. It's so good to have today my mom and my dad with us this morning. And um, I mention them because, you know, they're here to see the grandkids, but not really here to see me. And, uh, and they went with their other, their other uh, my sibling, their other child, to all the way to Florida on vacation and left me here. And, um, <clears throat> and my dad went deep sea fishing and I don't know, they caught some big kind of fish or something. It's this huge stuff. I, I've never gotten to do that kind of stuff. You know, I get mistreated. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm telling you, you can get the big, it was, took a big rod, it took a big hook to catch these fish that they got to have prepared and they sit around in Florida and ate and I was in Cersei eating McDonald's but anyway <laughs> I'm telling you you can get on the biggest deep sea fishing boat and have the biggest rod but you can't hook Leviathan what, what, what is God saying? God is saying you can't get your arms around him guys there's not enough bicep to control him. Ladies, there's not enough intellect to control him. Leviathan will not be controlled by human power or ability. You cannot control him. He will not be nailed down. He will not be controlled. But you must, we must allow God to reveal us to us so that as the Lord shines on us, we humble ourselves and say, Oh God, change me. Deliver me from the pride that is in my heart. Are you listening? Arrogant people do not want to depend on God. Humble people say, Oh God, you're all I've got. And what God is stirring us to do in these last days is to break the spirit of Leviathan by humbling ourselves and saying, God, even we who are in the church, we must depend on you. And can I tell you that one of the greatest, if not the greatest place that the spirit of Leviathan works and moves is in the house of God. Mm, I'm going to show you that. Only the severe sword of the Lord will defeat him. Number two, real quickly. Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? This is so good. The word supplication simply means prayer and petition. What is the word of God saying? The Lord is saying the spirit of Leviathan, Leviathan hates prayer. He despises prayer because Leviathan is all about the flesh. He's all about me. He's all about what makes the flesh comfortable. Leviathan says, why should you talk to someone that you cannot even see? And depend on a God that you can't reach up and touch? Wake up, sir, ma'am, young person, and listen. The reason some of you are having trouble listening... Is because the spirit of Leviathan has a grip on your heart and does not want you to go free. A person under the influence of the spirit of Leviathan doesn't put a premium on prayer. Prayer is a fallback plan. It is a plan B or C or D, but it's not A.
People who find it hard to pray are under the spirit of Leviathan. Can I just be honest? If you find it hard to pray, it's not because you have ADD or it's, it's not because you're hyper. It's not because you're busy. You're not too busy to pray. You're bound by the spirit of Leviathan and the Lord wants to set you free. You say, you're being hard, preacher. If I'm pointing a finger at you, three more coming back to me. I'm just telling you the truth. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you prayed and you were not at church? Let me, let me get a little better. When was the last time you prayed and it wasn't this prayer? Lord, bless the food. Take out all the calories. All the bad stuff and use it to nourish my bodies. When's the last time you prayed and it wasn't that prayer? Come on now. If you ladies in the back would just sit down and stay in your seat, please. I would appreciate it. Look at me, listen. Leviathan hates prayer. When you humble yourself and say, I can't make it. And my family won't make it. And my marriage won't make it. And my life, it won't make it. Unless I spend time with God. I'm not spending time with God to get good enough. I'm spending time with God it's because He's my everything and my all. And I humble myself in this, this. I'm telling you, the spirit of pride hates the spirit of prayer. Can I tell you? I, I start preaching this and I, I get just so bold. I'm telling you, this is not my personality, okay? You know, one of the things that I was told literally by a person in this church when I left, and we're taping this, and l put it on Facebook. Somebody said, yeah, we only heard one negative thing about you, Pastor Ronnie. We heard you pray too much. Yeah, that's... I'm telling you, a spirit of prayer, a spirit of Leviathan hates a spirit of prayer. Now, I said this in the early service, and I'll say it again. We know the story of when Lazarus was raised from the dead, and now Jesus is at their house with Martha and Mary. Remember the story? Martha's making the meal. Mary's hanging out at the feet of Jesus. Everybody remember that story? Martha got mad because Mary was not helping with the meal. So she complained to Jesus. Watch who you complain about to Jesus. Because you listen close enough, he'll probably rebuke you. But here's the problem. Too many of us won't go to Jesus, we'll go to our neighbor. Because they'll pat us and they'll say, Oh, you're right, honey, bless your heart. And they'll just feed and, and rub Leviathan. Oh, little Leviathan. Calm down, Leviathan. You're right, you're right. But anyway, so she tells, she tells Jesus, and Jesus says, Martha, Mary's discovered what's most important. You're worried about what we're going to eat. Mary's concerned about what I'm going to say. I'm telling you, the thing that, what did, what did, what did Isaiah 27 once say? The, what breaks Leviathan? Nothing but the severe sword of the Lord. What will break Leviathan in your heart, in Ronnie's heart? The severe sword of the Lord. In other words, the word of the Lord will pierce the scales that are surrounding Leviathan because he doesn't want to show himself. And break through, and Ronnie will break. And when Ronnie breaks, you know what gets in? Air. Whew. What air is that? Auction? No, 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 no. Better air than that. Spirit of God. Whoo! Spirit of God comes in. And the reason some of you run from the Spirit of God is you're afraid you're going to be humiliated. Afraid you're going to lose friends. And afraid of losing your pet sin. And all of that is because you are bound by Leviathan. Quit running from a move of God. That's what you need. But I might act like you, preacher. You might act worse. Get in. <laughs> or you might just be real still and just cry. Who cares? Just let God get a hold of you. Am I out of time? You're acting like it. Oh, I've got to hurry.
Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Will you give me five more minutes? Ten, okay. Thank you. No, don't go anywhere. Seriously, hang on. And any of our adults that see a young person trying to move, tell them to sit down. You have my permission. <clears throat> Humble people realize their need to pray. I don't pray because I'm some spe special spiritual person. There are many pastors who do not pray. Amen. Pastors, if you do not pray, there will be destruction and a fall in your ministry. You cannot defeat the devils over your area without praying. So the story of Mary and Martha, you thought I forgot, listen. So Jesus told you, you've got to hear from God. That breaks severe. That doesn't mean that after you hear and Jesus through the session that it's then time to get up and cook supper. Yeah. That right, husband? Somebody's got to cook, right? <laughs> Just teasing, come on. What I'm trying to say is there is a time to pray and then when you hear from God, do what you, you heard God say. So I, don't, you know, so I don't spend just all my time praying. When God releases me from prayer, then I go do what He says. Humble people realize their need to pray. They recognize, God, <laughs> you don't have to do this for me, but I sure would appreciate it. Amen. Can I show you the difference? Arrogant people say, God, you owe me. The preacher said you would do it. I saw it in your word where you said you would do it. You owe me. Can I tell you, God doesn't owe you anything. Amen. He already gave you everything. His name is Jesus. He gave his life, shed his blood. And some of you, listen to me, the scale over Leviathan in your life is anger. And part of that anger is an anger and a resentment and a bitterness at God. You say you're angry at people, but you're really angry at God because He didn't do what you thought He should do when He should do it. Did you? What you didn't know is He wasn't finished, and you gave up too soon and got mad at Him. And you know what Leviathan did? Pride? He said, you deserve better than that. God owes you. And then, boom, He just put up a scale over Him called anger and resentment at God. And every time you pray, you can't even get to the root of your problem, pride, because they're the scale of anger. Oh, that's good preaching. Amen. So what I do, I say, Lord, I was wrong. I got mad at you and it was really Satan, the devil, Abaddon, Apollon. Come on. Number three, almost finished. Will Leviathan make a covenant with you? This is the last one I'm going to do, but this is so powerful. Will Leviathan make a covenant with you? This is a good one. Mm. Leviathan isn't interested in you. He isn't interested in what you get out of it. Leviathan is only interested in what he wants, his welfare, and what he gets out of it. He is not interested in sacrifice or commitment. As God asks... Job, this question he is saying, Leviathan will never make a covenant. It's the opposite of what God does. God sent his son, as I said earlier, shed his blood. And by the power of the blood of Jesus, he made a blood covenant with us. He made a blood covenant with us. It's a blood covenant. It's a contract. It's an agreement. And watch this. Tests, troubles, and trials will never break the covenant. You making mistakes. You not dialing on every I and crossing every T and being Mr. Mr. Perfect. God will not walk out on you. But Leviathan will leave you. The spirit of Leviathan has trouble with commitment. Leviathan has a hard time staying married. Mmm. And hear me, I am not preaching to people who have already been through divorce. If divorce is behind you, it's in your past. I am not picking on you. The Lord forgives. 
And for some of you, it wasn't your fault anyway. Somebody else cheated and walked out. But I am speaking to those of you who are married. Leviathan has a hard time staying married. Why? Because it is a covenant. It is a commitment. Leviathan has a hard time staying committed. Leviathan has a hard time staying in the same church. I knew that would get a lot of... Now don't misunderstand me. There are people that God speaks to and sends to our church. And it is a God thing. And when it's a God thing, you should obey and go. And there are people that God speaks to who comes to our church that he sends to another. And when God speaks, you should go. But understand the spirit of what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about church hopping. <laughs> I'm talking about you come and... <laughs> preacher makes you mad. The, some lady, some man makes you mad. And so... Well, I just, I just didn't get what I wanted there, so I'm just going to go down the road and get what I want. Has a hard time. Almost finished, I know. Some of you are quitting. Humbling to ask forgiveness with those who you're in covenant with is what God desires for your life. Here's what I'm saying, young people. The reason some of you can't stay friends very long you get mad at each other and you quit it's because the spirit of Leviathan has you bound and when you enter into a covenant and you become friends that covenant goes through troubles and trials and tests it, it makes it through fires some of us have trouble with friendships and family members and, and situations it passes through the fire and it humbles itself and says, forgive me. Pride will stand its ground to the bitter end and declare, I am right to the bitter end. Let me give you a little example. I'm closing with this. Third and final one. It was caught on tape and then shown to the employees of a corporation. And as it's being shown on tape to the employees of the corporation, it's on tape. And so these employees were stealing from the corporation. They were putting um, stock from the corporation into the trunks of their cars. They were on tape. They were brought into management. They were shown the tape of their own face, own vehicle, stealing, and put in their own trunk. And the tape went on to reveal that these people, as they were being shown the tape of them stealing became angry, became hateful, and began to holler and begin to say, this is a trick, that's not me, you're playing a trick on me, I'm going to sue you. And to the bitter end, denied that they ever stole one thing. That's Leviathan. And that spirit has even crept into the church and what God wants is for us to be quick to admit we made a mistake instead of struggle to admit. We, oh, man, I'm preaching good. I wish it wasn't so late. Mm. Leviathan is not going to serve or submit to anybody. I'll do what I want to. I usually only have three closings. Can I get one more? No more questions, but let me, let me do this. So Leviathan, the spirit of pride, covers himself with scales. I mentioned anger. Last week I mentioned a couple. Rejection, lust. But listen to me. Insecurity, shame, fear, religion. That's why earlier I said Leviathan works in the house of God probably any other, more than any other place. Because we in the house of God have learned to be religious. And it is through a scale of religion, which is knowing about God but not really knowing Him, that covers up the real root of the problem, which is pride. These scales cover. So I ask you a question. Is there an area in your life that is almost unreachable? 
Is there an area in your life that is almost unreachable? Watch this. This is how Leviathan works. God gets you close. He reels you in. And He gets you close. But every time He gets to that place, you wiggle loose. Ooh, I'm talking to some people in this room. I know I'm out of time, but I had to... Young people, listen to me. Every time... You get in and you get so close. Moms, dads. And he gets to that. He puts his finger on that. You wiggle loose. It's an unreachable, almost in unreachable spot. Because you refuse to turn it over to him. But today God says that deep place. That thing that you've held on to. Listen. In that last question, you know what it says about Leviathan? It not only tells us that he will, he will not make a covenant with you, it not only tells us he will not take supplications, but it says he will not speak softly to you. You know where Leviathan manifests? The mouth, the tongue. And James says the tongue is an unruly member and it's almost impossible to tame. And those of you that go around being hateful and mistreating other people because you don't get your way, I'm telling you, you're bound by Leviathan. And you need to repent and humble yourself and ask Jesus to set you free. God didn't call us to be peacekeepers, but He called us to be peacemakers. There is a difference. Peacekeepers mean I keep peace at all costs. No, God didn't ask you to be a doormat. Peacemakers mean I will do everything I can with the power of God to make peace even with my enemies. I'm out of time. Stand with me.